Welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about some of the base material properties as well as the material channels that you'll be using as you develop your own materials. So this is the material that we're actually going to create in these videos. As a matter of fact, you're kind of getting to see into the future because I've recorded this video after already completing all of the other videos. So this really is the one we made. So I'm going to double click here. And the first thing I want to do is just click on the primary node of our material. It's this great big long list of channels. And let's take a look at some of the properties. The two important properties I really want you to know about are blend mode and lighting model. Because between these two properties, you have a vast amount of control over the kind of material you're making. Now let's start with blend mode. If we click the drop down, we only have a few of these available. We have opaque, which is great for solid objects, and that's actually what we're going to be working in throughout this demonstration. We have masked. Masked materials can use a mask texture to punch out areas in kind of a binary fashion. Either the material is visible or it's not visible. And a good example would be something like a chain link fence where you would have a metal-like material, but you'd have to punch out little diamond-shaped sections in between the wires. And you would do that by creating a texture that was white where the wires were and then black where the punch-outs would be. And that would that's how it would be handled. Now, moving down from here, we have translucent. Translucent means that you've got a material that uh, is going to allow light to pass through it in some manner, like, like glass, for instance. We have additive, which will only add color information. Now, uh, this is good for things like lasers and fire and uh, various particle effects. And then finally, we have modulate, which is going to take the overall color and multiply it by whatever's in the background. This is really good for decals. Now, moving down from here, we have lighting models. Fong is going to be our basic default lighting model, great for opaque objects. This allows you control over specularity and, and changing that by increasing your specular power. Uh, down from here, we have non-directional. This is going to be kind of like turning off all of your... Diff uh, well, uh, what's the best way to say this? Using only diffuse color, so you're not going to get any shading information. Now, technically, right now, this only works for... Uh, dynamically lit objects, so keep that in mind. Now down from here we have unlit, the name says it all. This is going to ignore any lighting information. In fact, if we switch this over to unlit, we just get a black material. We would have to take what's powering the diffuse color and actually plug that into emissive, and now we can see the result. So really what this means is you're only listening to the emissive channel. Now SHRPT is non-functional, you can just ignore that. Uh, MLM Custom allows you to create your own lighting model. And then finally, you have Anisotropic, which is good for things like brushed metal or maybe uh, a character's hair. So I'm going to put this back over on Fong. A couple of other properties you ought to know about. If we scroll down, you have the usage area. These are all the different ways that your material could be used. So if you're doing something special, like if you're making uh, maybe particle sprite material or foliage material or a decal material, you'll want to check the appropriate checkbox. All right, so there's our properties. Now let's shift over and talk about channels. There's a great big long list of channels that you can tap into to control your material. And I'm not going to plug something and give you a demonstration of each and every single one, but let's just kind of generally talk about them. Diffuse is going to supply you with your typical opaque color. It's kind of like your general color. Diffuse power controls how quickly you'll go from full color to a shaded darkening when, as you lose your lighting information. Now this one I can demo fairly easily. I'm going to hold down the one key and left click here in space and that's going to create a constant expression and a constant just holds a single value. I'm going to set this value to one and plug it into diffuse power and nothing happens because one is the default. But if I change this value to say 10, you'll notice that we're getting a much you know, a larger shift between our darks and our lights. So now I have much, much more dramatic lit areas quickly leading off to darkened areas. And we'll pull that back down to, say, 5, and then back down to its default of 1. So it just controls how you get that shift from your lit areas to your dark areas. Now let's unplug that. Moving down from here, we have emissive. This is how you make your materials appear to glow. If we plugged a texture that was just, say maybe bright blue in the location of the grout for these bricks, 
then the bricks would appear to be glowing in the location of the grout. That's all there is to it. The stronger your emissive gl uh, grows, like if you set it to a value greater than one, you'll start to get a nice glow effect around the outer edges of your emission. Moving down from here, we have specular. This controls the color of your specular highlights. Matter of fact, we've already got something powering this. So uh, let me take my overall specular, and currently it's this kind of really dim red. Let's make it something really bright, like pure white. And there you go. We've just changed our specular. We also have specular power, which I can demonstrate here just by changing the parameter we already have plugged into it. If I set this to 1, we get a great big specular highlight. The higher I go, so there's 10, you'll notice my specular highlight starts to get tighter. Basically, this allows you to simulate glossiness. Moving down, we have opacity. This allows you to control how opaque an object is. It will start to become transparent as you plug textures into this. And you have opacity mask, which is used specifically with the masked material type I mentioned earlier. This is where you would plug in the texture for a chain link fence that punched out the areas of the chain link. Distortion is, is one of my favorites. Distortion actually allows you to perturb the pixels of a material as they pass through an object. I'd, I'd love to show this one off. It's just so much fun. I'm gonna take our material. So let's select the material itself. Let's go back over to the blend mode and I'm gonna set this over to say additive. And let's take the lighting model and set this to unlit. And all I'm going to do is grab our normal map. And I'm going to plug this into the distortion channel. Distortion is actually looking for normal information. And if we take a look at the grid lines back here very closely, you'll see that they're rippling almost as if there's a heat shimmer going on. It's kind of like refraction. In fact, that's the purpose. It's here to simulate things like refraction. And you can use it for heat shimmers, actually, if you want to. Now, it only is going to work if you can see through your object, so do keep that in mind. Now, let me go ahead and switch back to Opaque and switch back to Fong, and we'll disconnect that from Distortion. Just keep in mind that this is looking for the type of information you generally see in a normal map because it uses the red, green, and blue channels to determine how far it's going to move your pixels around. Now, down from here, we have Transmission Color and Transmission Mask. Now, this is... I can kind of demonstrate this. Let's create a special kind of node. Let's make a vector parameter. So scroll up to parameters. Let's bring in a vector parameter. And let's drop a color in here, like red. And I'm just going to plug this into the transmission color. Now what this does is that it causes light that is passing against the surface of your object to appear to be diffusing through it like subsurface scattering. Now to really show this off, I need to plug something into the transmission mask as well. So let me just take this one and we'll plug that into the transmission mask. And take a look at what we get. Around the edges of where our shadows exist, we're getting some red bleeding through. Now how can you use this? Well, if you have a character, you could uh, take their ears and give them a transmission mask so that their ears are bright white and then plug like a color like dark red into your transmission color. And now when light comes in behind their ears, their ears are going to seem to get that subsurface scattering effect. It's just a way to mock up subsurface scattering. It's not real subsurface scattering, but it, it's convincing enough. And you see as I move the light around here, we get a really nice effect that makes it kind of like appear translucent. Very, very cool effect. I love playing with that. Now down from here we have normal. You can just plug a normal map into this, and this is why we have the bump effect on our material. Now I'm going to take out that transmission stuff for now, so we'll just unplug that. Now if I unplug the normal map, you see we just have a nice flat material. Or we can plug it back in, and there's the result, which is one of the best ways I know to show off a normal map. Just unplug it and plug it back in. Down from here, we have custom lighting. We can take these material expressions and put them together to define our very own lighting model if we didn't want to use Fong or Anisotropic. And then we just plug the result into here, and there you have it. We have our own lighting model. If that lighting model requires special handling of diffuse, we can plug that in here. We can control the anisotropic direction of an anisotropic uh, shader by plugging the appropriate information in here. And then finally, we have world position offset, which is really only useful if you have a material which requires that the world position be kept track of and you need to kind of offset it in a particular direction. 
So that's a quick rundown of our channels. Probably the ones you're going to use more often than not are going to be things like diffuse, emissive, specular, specular power, opacity, depending on if you're making a you know translucent or transparent style material. Opacity mask you'll use a lot. Distortion is just awesome and fun to play with. Uh, transmission color and transmission mask, really for only things like wax and human skin, because that's how you get that sort of subsurface scattering effect. Normal, you have to use. Uh, I'm sorry, you just... you kind of you just need to have a normal unless you're doing something perfectly smooth like glass or a chrome sphere or something like that you generally always want to have some kind of a normal map now that's a quick look at our properties and at the channels we're going to be using let's now get in get our hands dirty and start to create our very own material inside the material editor that is going to wrap things up for this video thanks a lot <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.